up everyone, Mike here with Drinking Out of Cups. Today we're going to be drinking a few different styles of beer out of a few different cups with my good friends Chris, who was a wonderful chef, formerly working at Bibu in South Philly, and my good friend Jeremy, who I know for a fact is a very avid beer drinker and who was formerly a bartender over at Conchahawken Brewing Company. Really excited to see what these guys think of the beers I brought to the table. I hope you all enjoy. Alright, hi, welcome. Uh, my name is Mike. I am here with the 86th podcast, and we are starting a new segment that I like to call Drinking Out of Cups. Uh, last time I was on the podcast, there was a couple people on there talking about how we kind of miss going to the bar and talking about beer, cracking beers and stuff, so I figured I would get our friends here and drink some beer and talk about it. Guys, do you want to introduce yourselves a little bit here? Of course. Go ahead. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. Well, of course, was, uh, a little <laughs> <laughs> of course, I was ready to listen. Uh, what's up? I'm Jeremy, uh, out of work bartender, like many of you, yeah, and, and many of us. <laughs> um, so we try to keep ourselves busy. So what do we still like to do is drink beer. So even though we're doing it a lot uh, less socially, um, as per instruction, but more frequently, you know, <laughs> if more frequently. <laughs> <than> <laughs> <like> so. <laughs> Somehow doing more of it, but uh, enjoying less of it. So we, I'm excited to, to do this and do it not alone. Yeah, there we go, right? Nice. And Chris, nice to see everybody back. Uh, I'm not the beer nerd here. I kind of just heard free beer and wanted to throw in my, you know, my palate, see what happens. So out of work chef right now. Lit. Yeah. Lit. Just um, wait for it all to normal out. I guess we'll start first with a Goza right Goza. here. Okay. Yeah, right. There we go. Looking all sexy. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Key Lime Pie Goza. I copped this off the wonderful app Tavor. I am 100% not sponsored by Tavor, but I also 110 support. Love them. Uh, it's an app. Check them out. T-A-V-O-U-R. iOS and Android. Uh, it actually, like, gives you an update saying, like, hey, right now this beer is on sale. Um, a lot of them, like, you can only order six at a time, but, like, some of them are, like, eight bucks for one beer. It's worth it. Uh, I don't really see myself buying six of them, but if you enjoy tasting around, and especially like being one of those people that would log on untapped and try and get like the high score on there, uh, that would probably be the best way to do it. I love them; they're great. I have beer delivered right to my door once a month, and it's all wonderful beers. But here we go. Oh, I sprayed. I'm sorry. I think I got a little on you. It's just like being back in the uh, bar. I was just right? saying, just Kicky, yeah. Right? I need a little, little bit of sticky, some... sticky handle. You know what I mean? Dude, I do miss like walking home with sticky shoes. That sound. That sound. Like hitting that the oh, artificial block. floor and just... Right? All right. Here we go, boys. That really is the subtle victory of the night. You're like, it was the right night. Yeah, and you get it pulled was over night. and they're like, why do you smell like alcohol, sir? And you're like, because I made a fuck ton of money. It's on my shirt, not on my breath. It's cool. All right. Here we go, boys. Two drinking out of cups. Drinking Two out of cups. Drinking out of cups. It's got some good color to it. Nice and golden. A little bubbly. Smells like key lime pie. Nice. I don't get a lot of salt, which is the part I don't usually like about ghosts. So for me, that's nice. Yeah, that's actually. Um, it tastes just like key lime pie. Just yeah, like key lime that's pie. Really like, that's a you lot get the smoother. you get the graham cracker crust at the bottom. You do like malt. right at the end as I exhale, I get like a ton of graham cracker. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Like, you get that sweetness. Yeah, mm-hmm. but even but, the way it hits your tongue, like mm-hmm. it's not it's not heavy, but it, like it coats. So have you cooked key lime pie before? Oh yeah. Do you use like do you use salt in that? Oh yeah. I like, mean not. Everybody's going to season with salt. Like, yeah. Desserts especially, you should always, always, always season. Maybe not the pepper. Um, but yeah, like, the, I don't get as much salt as I would on a normal goes, I guess. Yeah, because that's my I thing. Like it's I, there. I was wondering you know? if they, like, went goes for key yeah. lime pie because key lime pie used well, the, salt or something. You're going to get the, the acidity from, you know... From the beer, but yeah. the the malt that that graham cracker flavor that, that definitely graham cracker is where that salt clutch. is going to be. Coming well, I've had beers before that were actually brewed with graham cracker. Like it, it's not an uncommon thing. So I, I I'm assuming that's what they did. Well, I like that they didn't oversell the lime. Like you right? get the key lime flavor instead of just an overabundance of lime. Flavor. Like, but it's that, not like that artificial uh, key lime, lime flavor. Like, <laughs> yeah. It tastes like yeah. that like you get in a made. bottle of giant. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I get yeah, you. Dude. I'm impressed. This is yeah. not a beer I would normally. This is out nice. Of my it's for. a it's a little bit more bitter, like a real key lime. Yeah. You know, it's the key lime isn't as sweet. It's not as you know. It's not what you would think of behind the bar, but it's definitely there. Like yeah. the, the bitterness balanced really nicely. It's the it's graham good. cracker is what brings it all together for me. Yeah. That's like the lingering flavor. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, it's just sequench. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm not a big sea quench guy. Like, I love dogfish. I'm, don't I'm get guilty. me wrong. Dogfish, I love you. Don't hate me. You've been great to me through the years. But, like, I mean, that sea quench. It, it's like I'm drinking gym socks. I love the sea quench. Not like gym socks either. Like, middle Man. of summer. I'll say warm weather beer. Warm weather when yeah. it's get off shift. You know, you got a weekend coming forward. You didn't eat all day. It's hot. You're sweaty. All yeah. you want to do is just drink a couple beers without dying. I go sea quench every single time. It's like it's a cold shower. Bar. Dogfish, if you're hiring, this guy right here. <laughs> Competition head, sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Green State Lager. Right? <laughs> Westbrook. I, I haven't had anything from him. So Where's it from? Uh, Westbrook. I'm like not sure. Trump. Where are they from? Oh, Mount George, Park. can you Google it? What? Guys, shout out to George. He's our camera guy and uh, our Googler. Can I'm you? Ordering pizza, what? You're ordering pizza? <laughs> Never mind. George is ordering pizza. I'm no, going to Google it. Us, this professional us. level has gone yeah. down aggressively already, but... He's <laughs> keeping us sober after the... But I also also am very excited that you're doing that. Right? Uh, but Westbrook I, Brewing Company. Let's see, South Carolina. I was just going to tell you that because I'm, I'm reading. You're reading it on. Uh, that's I, usually I all the information. I wanted to let you get whatever, there, dude. Like, it's I, cool. Some of us are millennials. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Oy vey. That's funny. Well, you just aged us. Yeah, yeah, right. Just a little bit. I'm 14, guys. Yeah, South South Carolina. <sighs> Don't worry, they carded me before this. <laughs> yeah, how's that work with the app? With the app, so your... upon delivery, you're supposed to show them a uh, ID saying that you're above 21. Okay. And it doesn't have to like match your ID. Like it's not like, are you Michael Swain here? Because I know George got mine last time it was in. They just kind of like check your ID, make sure you're 21, and they'll drop it off at your house. But like, make sure someone is home. They won't leave it on your doorstep, which I really enjoy being in this wonderful city of package thieves. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nothing like having all your beard disappear off your porch. I would cry. Dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's Trump it. bucks went. To, to good use here. What do you mean? I used my hard earned. This was my hard earned money. I haven't gotten my Trump bucks yet. Okay. Oh, really? Yeah, this is my hard earned unemployment money. <laughs> uh, so, as the resident uh, beer noob, how fast are you supposed to be drinking these tastings? I mean, I'll sh- do you want to chairs it and shoot it? I'm down. Are we down trying, to, are well, we trying to power clear through? Or like, the next one? Fuck no, you know let's what I mean? go. Right, we cool. have plenty of beers power. here. <laughs> Here's the thing, too. If you are moving a little fast or like. You're anything like me, and you have this on while you're on your way to, like, buy more beer or, like, cleaning your house or, like, you know, not like me and running or hiking and doing outdoor activities. Um, I'm going to take all these beers. I'm going to post pictures like the cans. I'll put a little description in there on uh, my Instagram, probably on the 86th uh, podcast Instagram as well. Um, If you guys want to post it too, you know, we'll put some links up or whatever. And uh, you can, like, go back there and, like, check the beers and, like, see if it's something that you honestly would, like, go for, uh, you know, in case you get tired of hearing my bullshit. Um, let's see. Next, let's go with the Jester King Unfiltered Pilsner. This is also one of my awesome Tavor purchases here. Look at that. Beautiful, right? There we go. All around. Here we go. Um, I had never seen an unfiltered Pilsner, personally. So that's why I went for it. And I am a big Pilsner fan. I like malt all day. This guy's all about his hops and his IPAs, if you can't tell. I like the beard. The beard. The white guy thing going on. It kind of happens. I used to love Pilsners and then grew a beard. and I fucking love it, dude. Yeah. It's all about the hops. Nah, dude. You give me a hot day, I want to act like I'm drinking, like, mineral water with a fucking pretzel. See, that's what I feel about, like, the gozes and, like, the sea quench and that, like, hot day. Let me drink okay. something salty that I want to drink more of. Nice I can't and cold. do the salt, man. The malt feels heavy and it tastes sweet and bready and I'm like, I don't want to yeah, be And eating. then I don't get the munchies because I'm not, like, sitting there like, I wish I had something to eat because it tastes like my food. Okay, so you like a, you don't like a beer that you have to chew? I chew, no, I fucks with chewy beers. There are some. <laughs> there are some that I do enjoy. Like, you get me, like, that thick molasses-y kind of, like, chewy flavor. I'm for it. Molasses. I think it's... Molasses. It's a mood thing, too, though. Like, sometimes, it is. Sometimes, there's a lot of beers that I love that sometimes are just like, ah, not tonight. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, That's tonight. how I am with, like, a lot of, like, barrel-aged things, especially, like, bourbon barrel-aged stouts, which is, like, a big thing, I know. But, like, it, it's got to be cold. I have usually have to have whiskey with me. Like, it's it's not like, oh, it's 9 o'clock in the morning. Like, let, let's go. Perfect for the plow. Yeah, right. Put, put a fire on. <laughs> hang out yeah. after. You know what I mean? There cold. I bottled yeah. up. Bottoms up, boys. Do a little clink action. Do a little clink up, action. Bottom, touch tips. Bottom yes. up. Bottom up. What? <laughs> oh, that's nice. For being unfiltered, though, this is, like, Super pretty weird. clear. Like, look at it. I don't taste anything, like, different than another Pilsner would. This guy's from Austin, Texas. I like the label on it, you know. It, nothing jumps out at me crazy, though. It tastes, like, a little darker, I guess. I'll be Does honest. Does that make it, sense? It, it tastes like the label looks. 
Yeah. It's almost exactly what you're you would expect. Yeah. From a clean it's you know, it's a pilsner. It's simple. It's, it's simple. Not bad. It's easy. It's still flavor in it, you know, it's not a I find it uh quite quaffable. You know. I'd drink it again. Okay. Drinkable. So you, look, you looked up the dictionary for I didn't episode. look it up. No, quaffable is one of my favorite <laughs> words, dude. I learned it when I was... I think it was when I was working at Victory Brewing Company that they uh, told us that. Quaffable is not on the can, so this time we are going to have to have you Google quaffable. <laughs> no, we don't have to Google quaffable. I know what quaffable means. I know my beer shit, even though I'm not a Cicerone. And this was a pint, so we do have a little bit more in here, boys. Uh, you don't have to worry about topping me off with it. I don't want to top you off, ever. It's, uh... Quaffable, easy to drink. See, you, uh, according okay. to George, George Googled it after he ordered pizza. I think what type he, of pizza he did you order? He off, he just bottled me off because I just got the, all the... <laughs> all, the little you got bit, all the unfiltered? There was a, yeah, the unfiltredness is now a little bit heavier. Oh, okay. Because, so I got the little sediment in the bottom. Does it taste like yeastier? Like, you know how, like, champagne sits with dead yeast so it gets that, like, bready flavor? What? Nah, it's still pretty mild. You don't really have it. It's not... No? No? Uh, not it. really, like, something that I would probably go out of my way to drink. I, it's, like, if it was on, like, if I if it was, like, a hot day, they had, like, the windows open, it was, like, we just got off shift, so it was, like, you know, nice out, I'd probably, like, order this if it was on a menu for, like, five to seven dollars, maybe? Well, that was, that's kind of what I was thinking, is, like, how much would you spend for it? Because, yeah. like, to me, it's nothing special, there's not, like, anything that's gonna blow me away. Yeah. It kind of just tastes like a slightly better, like... Miller Lite. Or, I was saying, it has like a I mean? domestic. Yeah, it tastes like, domestic. You've which... got to give it to Miller Lite, though. They do have a good Pilsner. Okay. I mean, if, I think it I hits all the marks. You if know it's what I mean? good, it's good. But, like, like I wouldn't put it up wise. against, like, and I wouldn't say it's one of the best Pilsners out there, but yeah. for something that's complete and you know, really mass produced, I prefer it over, you know, anything, any other yeah. domestic. See, that's that's the problem with, like, good Pilsners for me, is I don't like them enough to spend the good money, probably mm-hmm. for the really good ones out mm-hmm. there. Yeah. So, like, what's the point? For $4, I can get. Uh, a Miller, yeah, or for seven dollars I can get this, and they taste the same. Yeah, but like you know, you could get like a super cool on this particular beer that I wanted to, which was Mike's money. <laughs> <laughs> this is exactly Agreed. the amount of money. Yes, I would one hundred percent buy again with like, Mike's money. I, I don't want to knock it because if if that's what you like and you don't like a really intense beer or yeah, a strong yeah. bitter beer, fine. It's it easy. does the job exactly what it's supposed. To be. It's so it's that is very middle of the road. road. Yeah, 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 yeah. There you go, George. I like it, it George. Like you like taste. Pilsners, too. Because, like, that's my problem with liking Pilsners. When it comes time for a craft yeah. Pilsner, I got to pay a little bit extra money for a beer that, like, you know, you get, like, that double IPA that's got, like, that extra kick to it, like a 9%. And you're like, cool, like, this is worth a couple extra bucks. But I'm like, oh, cool, this is now, like, 6%. And, like, it tastes really good. I like it. But, like, you know, it, you know, could be better. Yeah. 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 Down the hatch? Yeah. Down the hatch. Down the hatch. Down the hatch. All right, let's switch it up, Chris. Let's go your route. What are we doing? We're gonna do the tunnel vision. Ooh. Now I'm not gonna lie to you. This is one I've already drank. It came in the mail, and I I couldn't help it. I went. It's got a beautiful label on it. It hypnotized me because you know, well, dabs, and it's great. Everything I'm looking for in IPA. Not too heavy. Uh, I'll let these guys go. I sound biased. No, no, no. Listen, if if we can talk about pilsners and give them a, a little bit of shout out, you should be able to go. IPA. I like it, dude. You can smell it now. Like it smells piney. Oh yeah, like I, it's fresh. I hate to. I, I am such a slut for IPA. I don't. Oh, care. Yeah. I like, <laughs> see, I, I see it all depends. Like, it's IPAs or sour. I want something out there like that stimulates my tongue mm-hmm. a little bit. Give me something that's super go, bitter or soup. He doesn't like IPAs. Oh, he doesn't like IPAs. Yeah, he messes oh, with the sinuses. Oh, now it smells like fish. Oh, that. No, see, no. Look, that, that, that look at that cloudy. Is, look at that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. See, that's what I would expect. Now we're starting to look like beer, filter. boys. Mm-hmm. Right? Excuse that's me. got a... Uh, oh, it's definitely it's a, a, a Citra. It's definitely yeah. a Citra. You got notes on all these? Read the can. That's I can bring a, up the Tavor. I probably yeah, should have prepared probably that, but should I'm like a piece of shit, so... That's, let's see. Zippy Lemon Melon. Ooh. So it's Citra Hops. Yeah. So I like Citra. It's a standard one. I feel like everybody, like... Dry hop? Yeah. 6.8%. So it's a little bit on the higher side. Mm-hmm. That's what I prefer. Let's get toasted. Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah, that's kind of good. You're the only it. 10 I see, baby. <laughs> the flavor, though, is, like, way more, like, malted out than, like, mm-hmm. hopped out, I think. At you least know, on the first sip. Yeah, it's not real bitter. No, I mean, it's not bitter. It's pretty mild anyway, it's, but... So it's, it's a, pine. Yeah. Way yeah, more, like, mastic flavor. flavor. Yeah. It's double dry hopped okay. with um, citra hops. 
You know what's weird? At first Giant glance, sandwich. it has a little bit of that. It's New got England mosaic style. in there too, which what? I it, really it like. Looks, at first glance, it's got a little bit of that um, kind of New England style IPA. Yeah, but it drinks much more like something you'd find from the West Coast. West Coast, it's yeah, got a, yeah, that yeah. earthy, piney, like you said. But that's it's got a good it's, body it's to it that's though too. It's not like See, a thin beer; like I think it coats it's fairly, very well for like it is. what it is. Yeah, I think it is light. You know, that's dangerous. Yeah. Yeah, Actually, I could, I could honest, sit and crush a couple of these at almost seven percent for yeah, a pounder. That's you know true. I mean? Yeah, you that sounds like a good night to me. That. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. I like early naps, especially with all this free time. This is an accidental nap waiting to happen. Yeah. This is not like this is, like, this is, this is, this is you have two or three of them. Yeah, <laughs> up in the sun, two or three in the middle of the day. Like, you fall asleep with a book on your chest or whatever you're doing, and wake up going, "Oh shit!" That sounds like a good day. Steve, make sure you're wearing a hat when you're outside because of this. Oh, yeah, that's right. Don't want to burn the top of your head. That head of yours thinks too shiny and beautiful. I miss you, bud. (laughs) We're going to do one of these with him. We'll get it all together. I know. I miss that beard. Hey. Rubbing his little. I'm sorry, dude. Whoa. I'm sorry. (laughs) I used to see that man every day. Now I do see you every day, so I'm tired of your beard. Okay. (laughs) To be honest, when I saw you today, I had to do a double take. I was like, I'm pretty sure that's his house. Dude. I've been here before. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I also enjoyed many. Many other beers the last time I was here. <laughs> so I wasn't 100% sure. Shout out to 12 Steps. <laughs> uh, it was, uh, I was bored, and I kind of, I, it's on my Instagram, so if you're in there looking up the beers, feel free to laugh at me while you're there. I, uh, our cameraman, George, George, show, show him yours. What? He's got a sweet little uh, handlebar going Beautiful. on, so I decided to wake up and do a handlebar myself with the beard I previously had. See, look at him. Isn't he beautiful? Gorgeous, baby. <laughs> Yeah, and so I cut you mine into like that. Pebbles became a long haul trucker. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. That's what I like to hear. Gotta... Ten four, Pebble baby. Which I don't even mean insultingly. <laughs> no, that's so the I hope best. Take it that it's way. better. No, he got the exactly gay like chocolate dell before, yeah, which is pretty Del great. Okay, one. that's okay. Yeah, yeah. I, can I can see, see that. that. Yeah, it's pretty much the same thing. Pebbles like if, is a trucker. If chocolate dell took like a. A different career path. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I get Chuck that. If Chuck Liddell <laughs> was like a, a bubble bo- bottom boy, I would go for yeah. that. Shout out to Cards Against Humanity. <laughs> You're trying to get Shout all out. the sponsors. I'm trying to get all the sponsors. That's my favorite card. I play it all the time. It wins I'm, every time. I believe it. It's a great game, too. Mm-hmm. But I just, it is funny that there's a uh, little subtle hints here. No, so, slightly. I mean, I'm trying. There's to no be. subtlety whatsoever. Amy, I'm poor. Like, <laughs> guys, the, the industry's broken. We need help. Thanks, Cards Actually, Against you know Humanity. What? Huge shout out to, uh, to Cards Against Humanity and everybody making like those fun games like that. Uh, yeah, what was right? the other one? What do you mean? Those yeah, guys are awesome, too. Fun. Yeah. Because so, that's about the only joy other than video games I've basically. had lately is beer yeah. and card games. So yeah, that's what we've been doing, dude. We've been playing Risk. We did Monopoly. I got Pandemic, which I just, I was on Amazon. I thought it was funny, <laughs> uh, which is, it's like Risk, but you work together, which I thought was pretty cool. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. To but, create or survive a To pandemic. survive a okay. pandemic, okay. which like, I mean, considering our circumstances. Yeah. It was nice. Wits and Wager, it's even though I don't think we play that right, but it's just gambling. Oh, know. yeah. It's great. We gotta get our picks. What? We oh, yeah. Get our picks. Yeah. yeah. No sports, no casinos. You gotta find a way to throw money around somehow. Well, that's Beer one thing, and dude, fake like, gambling. No sports. We were at... on FanDuel, uh, one of the only things you can bet on right now is uh, table Rocket tennis. Rocket League? Table tennis. Wow. <laughs> Apparently because you're six still feet a apart. table tennis league. Yeah. 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 It was your house that we were at when we watched the last Flyers game, right? Where they played the Bruins? Yeah. Was that the last game? That was the last game. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. I was joking about the, the quarantine and the price of hand sanitizer, oh, and then right. two weeks later, yeah. it was yeah. locked down everything. Because oh. we were on the nine-game streak, and like we were about to go ten, and I was yeah. like, all right, we could end it on ten, but I mean, it was a decent game. Still terrified of Gritty. He's out there somewhere. Dude, did you see the post that they, that's been going around? I don't know if it's real or not, but it was like, when this whole quarantine's over, I'm punching another kid. Oh, I did see that. Dude, shit's held later. There's that no way that's real, real, but I still appreciate it. I, I Oh, it, it's real. It could be real. <laughs> okay, you can fact check me all you want. That, that's like my Jesus. Like, there's no proof, but that's real. Like, that orange Jesus. <laughs> my fat it's orange Jesus, Jesus from Del <laughs> Easy. 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 Well, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. And you wonder why people think you're from Delco. I know. He's actually from Delco. Yeah, I know, but like... You worked in Delco with me. I you, did. You, I, that was not that the was first restaurant enough. in Delco. You're more no, Delco so. than he is. Though. Whatever. <laughs> that might be true. Yeah. yeah. You, got, you got any ranch on you? Rat Delco. <laughs> Yeah. Oh god. Maybe, uh, all right. Bottoms Wait, George's Delco too? Yeah. George's oh, yeah, Delco yeah. too. Wait, Delco. really? Yeah, it was Garden Valley. Oh. Oh, you were rich Delco. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's at Upper Delco. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That's, That's still Delco though. It it's still Delco. When you're, once you're in the city, it counts. If you go in the Delco and you're like, yeah, I'm from here, don't no, tell me yeah. you're going to Valley. Yeah. 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 Nope. <laughs> yeah. People, people look at right. me. 
Well, Which is know. ironic. So you guys are better at That's the most Delco thing to do is look shots, down on man. someone for being successful. It's, it's all podcast. Really I, I just realized turned into you a power tapped hour. like we were doing a shot every just time. Just like I'm in a bar. Really I can't not. the second one because I noticed. Uh, this is a bar. We'd have been three shots of whiskey by now. Yeah. I mean, we got some. For I'm after. Right, after. after the <laughs> I'm right. We got to at least taste everything before we get sloshed. It's true. All right. This next guy is the Resist Milkshake IPA. From the Brewing Project. Oh, shit. There's still more beer in there? Nope. Oh, whack. <laughs> All right. Let's see what this Do guy has. Last dribbles? No, it's fine. Okay. This is a milkshake IPA with citra hops, mosaic hops, milk sugar, naturally, and a little bit of tangerine with some vanilla. So I'm really hoping this tastes Creamsicle. like a creamsicle. Yeah. So what makes milkshake milkshake? Uh, it would be the lactose. Okay. Yeah. So pretty much if you oh, add... I want to taste this one. If you add lactose so you can call it a milkshake, yeah, whatever. Yeah, so, like, that's what they did with, like, milk stouts. Yeah. And then, like, I know, like, Levante is one in this area that's been doing a ton of great milkshake IPAs. Mm-hmm. And, like, I mean, they're, what is it, the um, uh, the Fruit Fetish series that they do? I love. They're all great. Except there was one I had, I think it was called Tickle Parts? No. Panda? I don't know. It had something in there. And it tasted like a banana Laffy Taffy. It was like, wasn't horrible, like, if you're into that, but, like, it did not hit right with me. Let's be real, nobody likes banana Laffy Taffy. I mean, yeah, unless you're shaking it. There's one person you offended who's gonna watch this. Yeah. Who's like, and they will never dare you. you. I will never listen to this yeah. piece of shit <laughs> again. I mean, like, you've seen this, you're here, too. This is, never mind. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, yeah? Oh, Solo. yeah. Oh, that's very creamsicle Ooh. smelling. Yeah, it smells exactly oh, like creamsicle. Well, I, it's like going to the fucking Jersey Shore. Wait, mm. not to backtrack, but I did mean to say before, like an asshole, I finished the rest of it. I was going to say that last IPA was a perfect, if you don't really like IPA, it's kind yeah. of a good kickoff. That was a nice, like, It intro. wasn't too yeah. hoppy, yeah. too bitter. It was so a little more rounded. How do you feel about, like, the milkshake IPAs? Like, if someone's like, I don't like IPAs and they like sweet things, I would tell them to go with a milkshake IPA, but in my head, that's not telling them that they like an IPA. You know what I mean? Because to me, yeah. like that, that that's not an IPA. I, I mean, like I, I don't want to down. I don't want to down talk it. So exactly, like, if you like sweeter stuff, or you want something that's on the sweeter side of beer, and you decide that that particular IPA you like, like fine, that's fine. It's it is an IPA, assuming that they made it across you know yeah. the lines of an IPA. Fine, but yeah, I don't think that you would go out of your way to be like, oh, I'm an IPA fan because I enjoy the creamsicle IPA. Yeah, exactly. Like, no, you're probably a creamsicle fan. Yeah. <laughs> I and mean, so, and let's be real, who's not? Exactly. Right? <laughs> but this isn't the first creamsicle beer we've seen either. Like, mm-hmm. creamsicle is a very, like, standard milkshake IPA flavor because I just feel like it's okay. something I can do. Yeah, here you go, George. Oh, yeah. All right, so oh, hell well, yeah. that brings up another question. It's like, what, what makes an IPA an IPA? So, is there a certain threshold of hop? Is it, it while lasts? you're making it, you have to have X amount of hop? Is it a bitterness? So, I've heard a few different things. And, like, when I was younger, one thing that I heard, like, from, it was, uh, what was his name? Rob Pine, the head brewer at McKenzie's for a while. He's no longer there. But he explained it to me that it was supposed to be above 25 IBUs originally to be a IPA. Okay. But... With New England uh, having their hazy IPAs and things and it doing mostly dry hops, they don't have the high IBUs. Okay. Um, I'm – these days, like, if anybody knows, like, comment this too because, like, I'm not 100% sure what classifies as an IPA these days. Do you know, Jeremy? I know you know the story behind IPAs. Do you want to, like, tell that or you want me to? Or? Well, I mean, it's I – mean- I feel like most I should, beer nerds I should know, know more. If you're listening to this, you like, probably already <laughs> yeah, know. Like, I feel like a lot of people already know, and I, sh- I feel like I should know more about this, and I feel like this is rattling rack in my brain somewhere uh, of more specifics of it. Because there's a lot of, to be a true IPA versus what can be sold as like what people think is an IPA, because yeah. there's, you know, your American pale ales and just a regular pale ale versus an actual true India pale ale. Yeah. Um, but obviously, the I mean, the original idea of the India... Uh, pale ale, pale ale yeah. was to survive the, the the trip the trip from the yeah. East India Trading Company. Okay. So that was the idea because so they were using the hops almost, to preserve it. The more hops you used, it would preserve it. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, yeah. and ironically enough, um, half the reason IPAs are so popular among craft brewing, and there's so many variations, like dog, all day, <laughs> <laughs> um, is the fact that it's actually, especially if you've ever homebrewed yeah. IPAs. A little bit more. I don't want to say easier yeah. because there's definitely a lot that goes into it to make a really good beer. Naturally. But you get a, there's more variance, I guess I yeah. should say. Like uh, to make like a lager at yeah. home, especially if you want to do like a cold brew or whatever. The amount of money you'd have to invest in like trying to make a home like yeah. well made, like true like lager or even like, even some pilsners uh, sometimes. 
um, IPAs are a lot more variable. So yeah. sometimes you can just take what I made an IPA at home that I just used. Uh, one came out horrible. Okay. So straight up. <laughs> we had a really cool idea, butchered it. Yeah. Uh, but another one we did, we just did, um, we actually did like an orange um, flavoring in it. So we actually decarb some orange peel, some more, um, and then fried up some cinnamon sugar, mm. like uh, oranges, and yeah. did them across the orange sauce, squeezed the juice, just cheesecloth it, soaked it, came out with a ton of sediment in the last couple of beers. But all the beers before that were absolutely delicious, and I was like, that was one of the best batches. It came out totally different than I expected. Wow. But within reason, it was still an IPA because it fell within that range. That range. Yeah. Okay. I just cool. can't. See, my question was because it's the milkshake and because mm-hmm. it's got the tangerine in it, like, it's sweet. It is. Mm-hmm. It's, well, the milk this, sugar, what happens is the yeast won't eat the milk sugar. Yeah. So it leaves that there, and that's yeah. why it's so sweet. But it's like, there's. I would actually like to see a lot more hop in this just yeah. because it's so sweet. I'd like some balance to but it. But like, see, that's what... I get the milkshake, lot. like the, the, the mouthfeel's there, the flavor's there, but it's sweet. A little bit more bitterness on that. I yeah. think it would have cut kind of the same way how the the first beer with that um, the graham cracker. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that... Help cut the sourness. Sourness. Help so cut you the just kind of like looking for another level of flavor. Like, do you? It just, just needs to be a it's little. Good. It's like a here, but it could be like you know here, yeah. here. Like it just needs more all around balance. Pinch of salt would help balance it or out. Or like some sort of bitterness in right there. Now. Yeah. But like what I find with most of the, like these milkshake IPAs is they don't have that hoppy flavor. Yeah. Yeah. Which is like well, that's and what it's it, almost like they're covering that up. Which like I, a lot of people argue like, well, that's not beer. Beer should taste like hops, but you can make beer without hops. So like, I don't know. Yeah. First of all, if you're ever that person who's like, this is what beer should taste like, fuck you. <laughs> Flat out. Okay, yeah, the Germans, the Germans tried that before. Yeah. We don't talk about the Germans trying yeah, stuff they, that often. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. They did an amazing job making beer. Years of course. Yeah. But they've had um, a flawed history, so maybe their opinions on things aren't exactly always yeah. right fully through. But I get it. Like it's okay to like what you like. There's a well, lot of beers that I've had. I've had friends of mine know. that have actually recently, before you know this whole thing, were over there, and there's breweries showing and giving classes on American style of brewing. Because, like, we basically do what America always does and just, you know, took this game and fucked it all up. We're just like, we're going to do whatever we want to it and, like, you know, here's the science of it and there's a little razzle-dazzle and that's us. But, like... America has a lot of problems, but good beer is not one. Not one at all, especially in our great state of Pennsylvania. And easily accessible, though, too. Because, like, you go anywhere and you're going to find at least one... Like, it might not be the best craft beer that you're looking for... But, but you're going to find dude, a craft beer. There's probably you know a brewery. Mean? And, like, now, honestly, distilleries are coming up, too. You can probably find yeah, a true. brewery and or distillery in any podunk little town in the state of Pennsylvania. And I love it. And, actually, the more podunk the town is, the better the... The, the better the whiskey is going to be. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> That's great. When you start getting out to, uh, you know, Pennsylvania. Yeah. Um, real Pennsylvania. Oh, yeah. When you get out there, some, like even even on the way, on I mean, Lancaster, is like a nice last little yeah. city to stop yeah. in before you end up in nowhere land. And even Lancaster Brewing, like, their stuff's awesome. Yeah. There's like really a funky, is. like, almost like a convection sugary taste. Wait, George, you don't convection? like IPAs, right? Yeah, yeah. Not, not, not convection. Did you try yeah. this? That's okay. what I said. I like that one. Though. You like that one? Right? Was good. Like Why do you like it? I like creamsicles. You like creamsicles? Yeah. See, it's well, not it like wasn't they bitter, creamsicle right? to no. me. Yeah. Yeah. No, it is 100% the like, and it, it, it and tastes like breakfast. Like breakfast. You know what I mean? It looks like somewhat separated orange juice. There's not enough whiskey for breakfast. Trust me. I'm feeling a little bit. I don't know. It just tastes like... What's like, I want maple syrup and some What is the percent sausage? on that? I didn't even check. 6.8, 6. I think I said. 6.8? Oh, yeah, I think it was something around 6, right? It's okay, I'll make sure to put that on the Instagram. Somewhere. Yeah. It's got to say it. It has to say it on the Instagram. It's right? not yeah. the best <laughs> can. It's no, the read. can, like, could, like, I don't know. I like I the like, art on I that like one. the art, but the information. So, one thing I have, like, loved off, like, getting into craft beer is there's a lot of them that actually go ahead and, like, search for local artists around them, and, like, they're, like, you know, we'll give you some free beer, or, you know, we'll pay you a little bit of money, and, like, here's this, and then, like, they like it, and they end up doing more art with them, and then there's also breweries that, like, grab it from multiple different artists, or, like, there's some places that even have, like, every single label is from a different artist, like, there's just so much cool shit being done, it's wonderful. Yeah, I mean, beer is good and art stuff. and science, yeah. which, I mean... By no means. I'm I mean, not beer. a scientist. In case, in case really? you didn't know, I'm not a scientist. <laughs> I had no I'm clue, Jeremy. Yeah. Like, wow. Yeah, I, uh, I have very little science knowledge. Okay. Okay. But, that being said, I think it's cool that beer is a little bit of both. So yeah. you can get that artistry. So I like the fact that they mix the, the art world with, with craft beer a lot. And a lot of 
a lot of breweries are doing this now. And we have, I think there's three here. Three. Yeah. have like the can wraps. The wrap. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm a fan. And most of them you can yeah, peel they're, off and they're still good. Yeah. yeah. Like my laptop is covered in them. <laughs> if you can, uh, if you can make nicey uh, with a brewery and yeah. you find a, an artist, sometimes they have extra labels, um, like labels that. You know the, the brewery doesn't use when they're canning, oh. um, and they make the best stickers. That's awesome. Sometimes that's how they, I end up with cut it um, down. Victor was doing what the Tank to Table series, and that's how I ended yeah. up with. I got the Tank to Table number two because uh, they went up and they like let us actually like go. They said want to help can like you know and, yeah free labor and whatnot, but it was fun. Like it was a good time. So it's seven percent. It's seven percent. It is. Okay. I like it, and it's from uh, Wisconsin. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wisconsin. President of cheese in it. So, is that a bad joke? That was a bad joke. <laughs> that was a, a bad joke. Can we hit a boo button? But don't. Alright, down the hatch with this guy. I'm about over this guy. Yeah, I'm not. It wasn't my favorite. No, I mean, it's, it's interesting. But I think yeah. I'd rather drink the Pilsner. This tastes wow. a bit like the Pilsner. Yeah, I think really? I'd rather drink wow. the Pilsner than this. Okay. This is right. sweet, sweet. Not. Not hopping and for the record, no, no uh, disrespect. No, no ill will. I am not. I would love a to Pilsner try guy. something different from that. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Like I've definitely had dry hop pilsners that I've enjoyed. Like mm-hmm. I just need something more than malt. One hundred percent. I, I mean, I don't know. You know me. I fucking love malt. I'll do malt all fucking day. Where is this beer? I just like right. beer. Like for the most part, there's not a lot of beer that I that I will say I'll no turn to. Turn away to. Yeah, yeah. You know? especially if it's free. Yeah, right. Oh man, Ugh, that was sweet. Yeah, it's yeah, hard to bottom drink. that subtle a little bit. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm not. See, there's like a weird thing in the middle that just doesn't. It, it, I don't know. Doesn't do it for you. No, yeah. it's yeah. like chalky. You know. Well, it's that lactose. Yeah, the la- yeah. But I've had lactose in plenty of beers before. It must be like but a different. Like, yeah, but with the lactose water. IPA, like it was thick. It was heavy. Yeah. It was. Uh, hey, you ready? There we go. All right. I tried to give you a little arc, but yeah. This guy like here thing. is the Irish. Death. Now, I'll read you the description. Death. Yeah, this is another one of my Tavor ones. Honestly, every one of these except one was from Tavor. But uh, I got this because the name sounds fucking dope. The uh, <laughs> description on it was really good. I'll read it in a sec. Like, it 100% sold me on it. Um, this is also one I've drank before because I couldn't wait and I'm impatient. But I'll leave my findings till later. I will let you gentlemen try this guy out. I must say, too, like, Ooh, very, very... Right? Good. Lucky with the pours. Yeah. Not well. Maybe not. I, luck, did, maybe I did use the bartender. Like a bartender. It's like it's I'm a been three months. So I forget that I can cook. Yeah, I used to bartender. <laughs> I, yeah. Well, I no, used it was bartend. it was more of a choice of cup. <laughs> now yeah. I drink beer you know and take I mean? shots <laughs> and talk to the camera on a laptop. So what yeah, is right. This, what is this cup, by the way? Huh? What is this cup? What we got so, a tiramisu. Uh, yeah, I was at BJ's and they had this these. They had tiramisus and like they came in these glass things and I was like, "Yo, that's a dope rocks glass." And I hated on you. He was so mad. Memories. He was like, "What are you bringing home these freaking tiramisus for? You don't need to eat tiramisu." It's like just wait. And I like ate all of them, washed them. He's like, "Where do we get the new rocks glasses?" <laughs> I thought you were really upset that they brought it like as, like on a chef standpoint. They yeah, brought right? home like store bought BJ's tiramisu. <laughs> So uh, mm. that I kind of understood. I was like, "Tiramisu oh, was trash." <laughs> so, I love it though because we got six glasses out of it. Exactly. So um, the Tavor describes this as "Call today's beer whatever you want, but for the love of all of that is dark malty. Absolutely, do not call it a stout. That is, unless you want to incur the wrath of Iron Horse owner head brewer Greg Parker, as he puts it. Quilter's Irish Death is about as close to an Irish stout as a coconut. Bear with me." Sure, it's dark and chewy and goody thick, and yeah, it's loaded with a whopping five different rich and roasty malts, crystal, caramel, caramel, pilsen, Munich, and chocolate, and it clocks in at a 7.8. That's there is more to there, but like, my thing was, when I drank this, the description said dark, chewy, and like, I mean, I'll give it another sip from when I had it before. Have you read the description on the can? It's a great yeah, description. The, uh, best beer I've never been able to find. No, the one underneath it, too. No, if all you this, call it. Yeah. Oh, no, all I haven't this, read all that. This, oh, it's this great. This is pretty incredible. <laughs> yeah. It's got good labeling on it. Like, my only thing was, like, I wouldn't call this chewy. Like, it has more of, like, a robust, dark flavor than an Irish stout would. Yes, 100%. But it has that body to it like an Irish stout. Like, it's light. Well, it's got the it, malt build like an Irish stout. I wouldn't drink whiskey with this like I do an Irish stout just because of the alcohol content. You know what's weird? I'm lying. I'll always drink whiskey. But it's got a nice red color to it as well. It like has deep down. It has yeah. more of a porter kind um, of drinkability to yeah, it. Yeah. Like, you don't have that um, 
It doesn't have that coffee. No, I get, that, I get a little, a little bit, bit of that coffee back in the back. But see, I think that's more from the chocolate. Like it's more of like a chocolate bitterness than a co- like yeah. it's the chocolate bitterness mm. I would get off of coffee. But no, I, the... I disagree. It's the it's the coffee bitterness that I would get off of a chocolate. Okay, like cool. it's it's more. Of, We're in the same range then, yeah. It's more of a bitter and like sharp yeah. rather than a round and like floral. Yeah, if that makes sense. You and know what I mean? Like I, think... I always think of of chocolate being floral. And yeah. coffee being, for the most part, if it's this dark, it's usually just more of a bitter, bitter component. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And this is definitely, like, a little bit of, like, real extra bitter malt, a little bit of coffee. Yeah. Chocolate, maybe. Maybe that's just a little bit of the, the vanilla I, and that lactose from the that, last see, beer. I yeah, think the, lingering the a little bit. Yeah. and the, the chocolate of it, because I almost expected this when I smelled it and saw, saw yeah. you pour it. I thought this was going to be more bitter. Yeah. I, it actually surprised me. It's really good. It's nice, but, I like it. My only thing with, like, that description right there and having this death name on it, I thought I was going to get it, it was going to come out, and I'd, like, take this one sip of this motor oil and, like, you know, almost be taken back a little bit, like, I which wanted, works on their advertising department, 100%. You yeah. got me. Like, you, you want, <laughs> and, like, the beer's not bad. I just wouldn't not call it chewy. I wouldn't have put, like, an Irish death name on it either. Like, I would have saved that for, like, something that packs a wallop. Like, this is a good beer. If they would have put something that wasn't so dramatized on it, I would call it better. Like, it just feels like it was hyped. Well, here's the other thing, though, is what's the most famous Irish beer of all time? Guinness. Yeah. All right. And what's the percentage? Yeah. And what's the percentage of alcohol? It's about 4% or something like that. Irish death. This is almost twice. You know what I mean? But they say it's not an Irish stout. It's not. But people think stouts to be heavy and thick. True. You know what I mean? Do you think they were trying to, like, just, like, I think this is a little play of, like, this is going to punch way harder than you think. Because it drinks very much like a carbonated Guinness. It's a little bit sweeter. I think the coffee melt on a a Guinness is a little bit more present. This is a little bit more depth a little bit more sweetness that is funny because a lot of people do th- i mean don't get me wrong there's some plenty heavy stats out there oh yeah, but yeah, yeah. a lot of times people see something like guinness and expect a really i don't want to use heavy in the terms of it in the terms thick, of ABV, big, yeah, yeah. They they want a thick high, beer. it is a pretty thick yeah. beer guinness yeah. if you're not it's, used to drinking it will sit heavy in your oh, stomach yeah. but it's um, not gonna mess you up it's not no. going to get you as drunk as you think you're gonna get no, no. you know it's a very low the ABV only exception is the fact that if you go to a Irish pub, you got a twenty ounce instead of a sixteen. Yeah. That's about the only. Day and they're going to start filling it up before you're done. Yep. So yeah. you're going to sit there and. But see, no, it's that from, marshmallow from in your head. Like that's what, like, <laughs> it's so watching like, the cask. Right, dude. Just... I know for a fact I could go down to the store and buy a Guinness bottle or buy a fucking can of it or whatever. But I want that pour. I want to go yeah. to the Irish bar. I want to have a cigarette in my hand and I want a pour of that beautiful Guinness. See, I don't want a cigarette though because I quit. Speaking of Guinness. um... I really was hoping this was going to taste a little bit more like the extra stout, the the one that was built to ship. It's not that yeah. that nitro heavy. It's yeah. the Guinness that people forgot about. It's a little bit darker malt, a little bit higher hop, a little bit more bitter coffee kind of flavor to it. I was hoping a little bit more of that, but this is all this talk. It's sweet. Want to sit next to a fire with Guinness and whiskey right? now. It's a sweet, really mm, well rounded plow. <laughs> cheers to the plow. Right. Uh. Yeah. It's good though. I like it. Like I mean, same thing I said before. It just it feels like it was hype. Smells like chocolate. If the route they went was that route, I didn't even think if it was like a you know cheeky little thing towards Guinness that kind of makes sense, or a cheeky thing to Irish stouts in general, like calling it that Irish death. It makes more sense. I just feel like it was very hyped. Also, I mean, I got very excited by the words it said, so it yeah. could have just been me. Yeah. So. Ready to kick it back? Pogue Mahone, Schleek Molly Yeah, we just got done talking about the ABV, but yeah, let's knock it back. Maybe that should be like a wine um, a little spit bucket for us. Like, we can just dip in nope. the spit. No, no, no. What was the uh, the South Park where he was talking about dropping Pilsners in the wine and then chugging it? Oh, when they... Oh, I forget. <laughs> that sounds like, horrible. It's, Actually, eh. Yeah, I try. It, it's a it's a smorgas it's, it's smorgas wine and it's classy. <laughs> so this one is from Free Will Brewing Company. I'm not gonna lie, the, I'm very excited. To yeah, have the this Ralphie is. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this is the 2016 Russian style Imperial Stout aged in bourbon barrels. This one actually, I have to give a big shout out to my mother for. Um, my mom actually coordinated with my girlfriend. My birthday was April 23rd during this whole quarantine thing. Uh, she reached out. She was like, "Hey, what beer is Michael drinking right now? Like, what does he like?" And she told her Colches and Stouts. My mother showed up with three different four-packs of Colches. 
which was awesome. And she showed up with this guy, and she was like, I honestly got it because the label was really cute, and I heard you like stout. She's like, but like save it for something because it was apparently really expensive. And I was like, well, no shit, mom. It's a 2016 Imperial Stout that was <laughs> aged in bourbon barrels. Like that's not like, you know, something you come along every day. <laughs> like, And it's just really nice to see her getting into beer. And uh, this was actually done at a Waywood Beverage. Shout out to Mike. I uh, grew up down in Kennett. Uh, out there, like, we're all, there's not much to do, so we just drink beer. <laughs> there's a couple breweries that have been out there, but before Recently. the breweries were there, like, the breweries are a very recent thing. It's, yeah. it, they've been kind of going through almost a, like, restaurant renaissance before COVID, which, you know, sucks, but. We'll get back to it. Yeah. Uh, we'll get back to it 100%, <laughs> but Waywood's been there selling craft beer for as long as I've been alive. And before the craft beer was a big yeah, thing. Yeah, like, I mean, like, and they hopped on it really quick. They grabbed yeah. all the local breweries, they grabbed around, and, like, they have what's really cool, and I mean, at your own risk, because I have had some ones that were not taken care of out of this barrel, but they have a, like, $2 barrel of, like, just a couple things that, like, haven't sold, and, like, every now and again, you just get, like, really lucky, and there's that one Mad Elf in there that, you know, is a little bit aged, but not terrible, and high ABV for when you want to get wasted, but then there's also those, like, couple of rare finds, like, you can probably find this in there in a couple of weeks, like, you know, like... You can find some good beers. At a dollar a bottle or a dollar. Two dollars, yeah. yeah. They have slushies now, too, like every freaking beer store is doing, but like... Oh, holy oh, shit, Yeah, baby. Oh, yeah. You boys like motor oil? So, real quick, uh, two things. One, what's the ABV? Um, enough. 15.1. Oh, so it's okay. got to be double digits. Yeah. So, oh, I mean, this is we a, might not shoot this one. Uh, what are you talking about? <laughs> well, that's why I saved it for last. Um, yeah. And also, like, what's the reason behind AJ and whiskey? Is it so, like, just I, flavor? Is it wait, AJ and whiskey or like AJ and whiskey? Like a whiskey barrel. barrel. So oh. it's easy. It's cheaper to get a used barrel. Number okay. one, stouts and whiskey go hand in hand, though. So of like, course, you might as well. Of course. Um, it just and I mean, does it do anything with the alcohol? Does it you know how does it change the beer overall? It, I guess. A lot of the time, what I've noticed when you're aging in these barrels. And, like, through aging process in general, you I pick up, like, a little bit of, like, a molasses and, like, raisiny flavor every time okay. I do, like, a barrel age. It does the seem, like... The wood tannins, the wood flavors you would me. normally find in, like, a whiskey or, yeah, or something. Yeah, but, like, I don't get raisins out of whiskey, but, like, I know, like, out of American Oak, vanilla tends to come through there. Mm-hmm. Certain wines, though, certain, you know, I think it's more the wood than the whiskey that you're going to yeah. find it in. Mm-hmm. You know, whiskey tends to be a little bit more grain-heavy, but definitely, like, wines... You know, I mean, like, it certain... just sounds dope too. Like, <laughs> this is bourbon barrel aged. Like yeah. it, that sounds so much better than. Well, I... my my thought is like, what started the trend and why and why is it such a big thing? Is it just because of the alcohol? Is it because it's aged for longer? Is it less gets made of to, it? To or... be honest, it's it's kind of yes to all all of it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I think the first couple times was a little bit more of just like an experiment. And so people fuck it, let's see that, what happens. Yeah. Yeah. And there's there's bar, uh, bourbon barrel aged beers that I've had, especially Stout is a popular oh, one. There's yeah. some IPAs out there. I know, don't wait, hold on, don't get I'm this sorry, up. dude. I'm, no, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I'm no, just looking I, no, at no, you. No, no, I don't. at me. You're, yeah, you talk right, about it. It's going to be really, really, like, yeah. <laughs> you can smell a little of the bourbon, and there's ones that I've had that you actually get the bourbon or whiskey or flavor. whatever you use, and you get the flavor of it. And I've even had, a, there's actually, a, I had a ghost that was aged in. Um, uh, they use a tequila. Tequila, yeah. They use uh, yeah. tequila, and you got that agave flavor yeah. that comes through naturally in there. That shit's tight, and it just soaks up something. Well, what so, is amazing? So what you're gonna pull the, the flavor best? from the wine. It depends in there. on how fresh the barrel was. Like, if you were to like, let's say they put the whiskey out of it next day, you put the mm-hmm. like beer in it. Well, there's whiskey in that wood. When it gets cold outside, that wood condenses. It's gonna mm-hmm. squeeze some of that whiskey out of there. It's gonna go in there. But like, let's say it's like. All right, cool. We're a brewery, and like we're starting out, but like we really want some barrels to age in. Maybe I'll buy like Jack Daniel's barrels. Not saying that that happens, but like you know, maybe I'll buy Jack Daniel's barrels, and it's going to take three weeks to ship to me, and it's been sitting in their like corner for another month or two. I don't imagine you're getting a lot of whiskey flavor off that. It all depends on the barrel. Every barrel acts different too. Yeah, I mean it's a little bit of a toss up, and that's I think that's some of the appeal too. So yeah. it's almost like small batch. I mean, you get like small batch whiskeys or bourbons yep. or scotch, whatever you yep. like. Um, sometimes we get that small batch that has a little different flavor than maybe the last time you had it from a different yeah. year or you know a different barrel batch, um, and that's kind of the appeal. I think a lot of these beers sometimes like this is a 2016. Next year, if you get one yeah. that's a 2017 or 2018. Cool. It might have a little different flavor. So is the base recipe of the beer usually going to be the same, and the thing that changes it is usually the most age, likely. The age well, and a lot the of the time, of the you'll season. see it'll be like right now we're going to release this stout, 
Okay. This is the stout that we made. Okay. And then in a little bit, we'll release this stout that we made with these ingredients, but we barrel aged it. Okay. You can kind of get a double release out of it, a smaller little thing. And then, like, each year does have differences. Like, uh, what is it? Goose Island is known. Yeah. For their bourbon counties. Like, you know, I have the 2018 aging now. Yeah. Uh, I need to cop a 2019. Uh, I know, like, friends of mine, like, we we'll save have up for extra, a couple years. Yeah, like, holler at your boy. Like, I'll taste some. it on here. <laughs> us. But I know Frank and I, what was it, last year went down to, luckily, you know, this was one of the good things coming out of, you know, smaller breweries being bought out by larger companies. But Goose Island was bought out. They opened up a location in Philadelphia here. And now I'm able to go and enjoy these bourbon county celebrations at the brewery. And when we were there, we tried their 2015, which is a highly, highly ranked stout. One of the most highly ranked stouts in the world. And granted, I think we split it. Uh, it was not a piece, but it was $80 in all, I think. Something like that. Don't quote me. I was drinking. But um, <laughs> it was a high like that, though, for a 16.9-ounce bottle. But, like, you know, they're selling it only there. And it was great. It definitely tasted different than the one we were trying then. But yeah. lots of my friends, like, they'll give you a call, and they've been aging these beers forever. They're tired of aging them. They're like, hey, dude. Let's do what do they call it? it's either a horse and it's horizontal where it goes the same beer over a course of years right that's not a vertical I forget it's either horizontal or I think vert- you're right yeah. I had to think about it I think, I, I think it's horizontal I don't wouldn't know that be vertical where it's the same beer over it might be Co- years tell me if I'm wrong <laughs> but uh, it's essentially like the, you get the call and it's like hey dude like I have these beers I've been aging them like let's taste each one side by side and figure it out and like yeah. there is a drastic difference in all of them that's my main point like yeah. it does matter and. Like, when I know, when I worked at uh, Manitoni, Max explained there, like, with whiskey and aging it there, like, it matters of, like, where it's sitting in the brewery, like, yeah. you know, the weather that just so happens to go on that month. Like, there's so many things that go on in the aging process that, like, add different flavors, and it's almost as if it's, like, a... N- of course, things can go wrong, but, like, nothing is quite wrong. Like, I know most people that are drinking these barrel-aged things, like, a lot like with like good wines like you, you're happy to try these things you're happy to see what happens because you understand like what goes on behind it and you just want to know the science and you want to be able to say like I've tried this and I can compare it to this and I know what goes on I mean that was that was the other part too is like you know mm. making beer <laughs> do you need a minute oh my god I think I came <laughs> making beer making whiskey is a very um, it's it's a little super, more scientific it's, it's a little brownie. more you follow a recipe. Yeah. You can make a consistent beer over and over and over. So they can make this exact same beer again and again and again every year. But the only won't... thing that's going to change it is aging in the barrel. Yep. You know, and that's kind of... I mean, they'll still taste similar. Like, one barrel is going to taste very similar to the next one and unless you well, drink a shit ton of it. Yeah, I mean... You know yeah. what I mean? That's the big thing that I know with whiskey is like, especially the what you're going to use to age it in is, you know, did it have sherry? Did it have Madeira? Did it have... Mm-hmm. Chardonnay? Did it have a port? Did it have something along those lines? I do notice bourbon's a big, a big one. Well, especially with stouts. Stouts age better than any other beer, too. Of course. I'm curious is I haven't seen many or any of uh, Sherry Cask or... Victory did a the Sour Monkey remix where they aged Sour Monkey and Chardonnay barrels. I know the Chardonnay. I haven't seen... That was cer- dope. Yeah. That was a good one. Give me heartburn. But it's yeah. <laughs> Uh, but there are definitely some barrels out there that I, I would like to see used. Maybe I would in the future. Too. Maybe well, it's I've seen, the you don't see those a lot heavy. anyway. Like I've only seen. There's a couple of rums I've seen do sherry casks. Yeah, um, it's more a, of a Scotch thing. What was it Manitoni did uh, port casks for? I think they did a gin that they rested in that, and I believe a rum as well. Um, I don't know many. Oh, that's thick. Yeah, that's it. I love this beer. Yeah. I'm sure that's some... raisiny. By the way, that's listed. It's as... not overly raisiny though. No, it's not. No. But it's listed as chewy. Yeah, again, yeah. that's chewy. That's this a chewy. That that this is chewy. In order for you to call it chewy, like this is like, light chewy to me. Yeah, yeah, but this is light chewy to me. Like I've had some that you take that one sip and literally right after the glass leaves your mouth, you're like. <laughs> like yeah, this is a good balance of chewy. Honestly, like this isn't. Sometimes I've had them where they've been aged like that, and if they, they I feel they've aged too long, they have that really thick raisin molasses, which I've said I like, but, like, it can be overpowering. I think this has a good balance with it. I get a ton of chocolate on this. Like, it reminds oh, yeah. me of a freaking brownie. Like, this is yeah, a very good beer. It reminds me of the fudge that goes on a fudge brownie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, that, that just poor uh, hot If it wasn't Sunday. such a, like, wonderful piece of 
art, I would throw some ice cream in it and see how it tastes in a float. But, mm. yeah. yeah. Delicious with stout, but you do not use the 2016. No, 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 no. no it's a good no. idea, but you use Guinness for that or some shit. I don't know. It's, it's still, dumb. I'm surprised at how bright it is. Um, yeah. It would be bright. Flavor wise, yeah. yeah, I'm fucking with you. you know, what I mean? <laughs> um, like it's, it's there. It's floral. It's this is definitely that chocolate thought yeah. that I had, where you get that herbal kind of flowery, fruity flavor to it, yeah. with a little bit of bitterness versus the bitterness heavy with a little bit of floral at yeah. the back. To be know? honest, like this hits like if you were like to tell me, and this is what I look for out of most beers. Like if you were to tell me like this is a stout. And you handed me this. Th- this in my brain is what triggers it. Like th- this is how it should taste. Thick, heavy, Thick, yeah. sweet. Like this a little is, bit of bitterness. It, it rings the bell for me. And I'm not saying all stouts have to like do that, but like there's just some of those beers you take that sip and it rings every bell that you're looking for in just that right way. And this is one well, of those. I'll beers. tell you what, too. When you get into the stouts like this that are especially imperial, ba- yeah, that's yeah. you know barrel <laughs> aged, and you're in the double digits ABV wise. It's really it's easy to get a bourbon because it does have. You can taste the bourbon. You get that bourbon. Just that flavor. little bit. It's all but I need. I appreciate the fact that it's not overly boozy because I've had yeah. beers and, and some of them I still like. Especially but up here. Yeah, when yeah. you get into like 11, 12 and higher percentages of beer, well, get they get that nose. You, yeah, it hits yeah. you in the sinuses. And they get that sweetness the to them real yeah. hard too. Like mm-hmm. the uh, Waldo from Lagunitas is an uh, IPA that's up there, yep. and I mean it's sweet, and that's what's going to happen through the brewing process. I'm not mad at it. Waldo is one of my favorite beers, but it happens. See, this yeah. had the burn on the nose at first, but now that it's had a chance to breathe, you know, it's gone. It's acting way more like a wine or a whiskey than it is a beer. Yeah. And at 15%, it's, it, that's wine It'll pack a while up. Yeah. yeah. There's mean, certain wines that so are lower than At this oh, point, you could call it a barley wine. Because mm-hmm. honestly, I, through my research, and again, tell me if I'm wrong, because this if is just the internet. It's barley, right? But uh, it's <laughs> told me that, like, if it hits above a certain ABV, which is usually high impact, which is around 11 or 12, because you don't usually see a lot of beers go higher than that, they can be considered a barley wine. Granted, I don't know if there's any barley in it, so they probably can't call it a barley wine. Well, that's why it would be imperial. Or, yeah, imperial also signifies that it has a ton of alcohol to it. Anytime you see imperial, it's going to be a hefty wild. And that's yeah. secondary fermentation on it, or just like a real strong first? Um... I don't know if it has to, but I know that usually it's a secondary okay. fermentation. Um, I'm not sure if they exactly... This, these are questions I should know. I feel like I'm We are not... I'm like, really, really, we're not I'm really like, like, I, I work at the brewery, but yeah. I don't make the beer. No, no, no. no. Yeah. I, I actually do a lot more drinking of the beer than <laughs> yeah, I do That's how you sell else. the beer, dude. That's exactly. Like, like, it's fucking wonderful. Well, I, well, I cook, uh, so my mind's all like science-based on yeah. this whole thing. Like, Figure out how it works. So well, it does amaze me, me like how many... like When it comes to breweries, like sitting there... and like That's what I learned. Like I learned more about beer working at Victory Brewing Company than like I have anywhere else, even Mackenzie Brewhouse. But um, we were in there, like, talking to the brewers. Like, they're there every day just with you. You're opening. They're coming in, too. Or they've probably already been there. Yeah. And, like, you taste it because you need to be able to sell that stuff for the day. Like, you're not sitting there pounding them all day. But it's like, all right, dude, we got this new beer on. Let me taste this. You talk about it with them. And, like, through that, you're able to learn so much more. And a ton of my friends that, like, started off just being like, yeah, dude, I don't really know what I'm going to do. I'm going to work at a brewery, I guess. Developed this love for it. Now they're like level two Cicerones. They're managing a brewery. They're best friends a brewer. They play frisbee golf every day. Mm-hmm. They have a retarded collection of beer that you know beats mine. I mean, yeah. you know, Lindsay. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. crazy. It's awesome. I mean, and then the funny thing is, the one thing I have learned. Uh, well, not one thing. I've learned a lot. But one thing I will tell you right off the bat is uh, so many breweries. Some of the beers that you've had and are on production. I would say there's a good percentage of those that are total mistakes. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Our brewery. Uh, what is it? Right a, now, a blood money yeah. from Akanji? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. One our, of my our, favorite stories, I, dude. Th- uh, that was absolutely not how that was supposed yep. to turn out. And then they were like, oh, how do we recreate this? Yeah, yeah but how many times does that happen in, in so many different things? Where, yeah. Oh, yeah. You, know, absolutely. You're, you throw well, something in and you're like, oh, shit, man. Well, like, this you know, is cooking, cooking yeah, is yeah. kind of the same way. Cooking's an art. Well, the worst part is, like, if I'm not paying attention, I'm just cooking something, like, put out. And then somebody tastes it, and they're like, I want this. Like, yeah. I want this on the menu. And you're like, shit, now i got to go back through and figure out what I put in and try and work that, on it. It's, you know? That's a terrible <laughs> thing. That's, all, that's how all about, backwards, like, 90% like, of my cocktails get made. Like, yeah, like, you throw it like, together, and then figure out what the ratios are. This will taste good. This will taste good. That feels right there. That feels right there. And I'm like, 
oh fuck that tastes really good I'm like alright it was about that about that <laughs> let me make it again I was like nope that one was off that it's one was never off, gonna be like, as good as the first one nope. but you can always try to get close nope never and that's I mean that's what's fun about a lot of stuff in this industry is like mm-hmm. it's not about nailing it on purpose it's yeah. all the happy little mistakes that you make along the way shout out Bob Ross yeah right but, <laughs> but my thing is though like at least yeah, with yeah. cooking and like you're cooking it right then and there like I'm sure there, there's like things that do take a long time but like at least with cooking or me making cocktails, like it, it's right there. I, yeah. can, I can put it out. I'm going to know if it's going to be right. Yeah. But say you're lagering something. Lagering takes, like, what, six weeks? Like, y- you don't know if your beer is going to taste like shit yeah. for six weeks. Like, yeah. could you? I would or, be... or a wild fermentation. Like, you don't know if that's going to yeah. go the way that you're Fucking hoping yeah. or not. Like, yeah. you know. Yeah, I know, yeah, I know yeah. that from a lot of, you know, doing the you fermentation. Know, you might do, yeah. you might do like, five problem. gallons. You know, yeah. I, there was a... I did a, a blonde ale, which is actually a relatively... Uh, simple home build. Okay. Um, but there's a lot to go. Like the the, sci- uh, the science side of it again comes down to you know your your, your sanitizing and what yeah. kind of bacteria is getting. Yeah. In. So unfortunately, the one of the first times I was trying it a couple years ago, um, yeah, it came out horrible. I yeah. did not do a good job sanitizing between uh, uh, creating the actual yeah, wort and yeah. like actually doing the boil and then going to ferment and then from fermenting to like actually trying to do the bottling and not using a, a proper siphon. Yeah. Um, so I butchered those beers. They were yeah. absolutely horrible, and I think a couple of them exploded. Um, well, I think that's a lesson you need to learn, though. It, oh, like, absolutely. You know, because yeah. I know when I first started doing stuff like that too, I had the mentality. You remember when I did the uh, banana, the banana wine, wine, and I was aging it, <laughs> and I didn't let it ferment all the way. Like the yeast was still active. I stuck it in the barrel, and we're sitting there hanging out in the living room, and all you hear is the boof. My bum <laughs> shot right off, dude. And like you it's just need to learn. Time. Yeah, right. But like, I feel like it's a lesson everyone learns that like you kind of have it in the back of your head. And it's like. Uh, it tells me to sanitize this. So, like I've skipped that part in a recipe before. Mm-hmm. Like whatever, yeah. and then or it's clean. Like how how yeah, whatever. sanitary does I it eat off of it? Like whatever. Yeah. Like fine, but you know, it turns out sanitary. I, I think you yeah. might. <laughs> I think you might relate to this a little bit. So I love cooking. I'm, yeah. I'm obviously not a chef at all, but I love cooking because cooking is the art side. Whereas it comes to like baking, mm-hmm. I'm a horrible baker. Well, because well, depending on what, but a lot yeah. of it is more exact yeah. to science and. Beer, as much as I love beer, is kind of this weird in between. Oh, 100%. where it's like you should follow the recipe. You can veer here and there, yeah. but these are the parts where you have to be more. So, precise. ironically, I think beer is the reason that I went the path that I did. So, when oh, I was in culinary school, oh eat. yeah, it's it's a big that thing. Something. When I was in culinary school, it was all about so this solid. like I don't need to be a baker. I don't want to be precise. Fuck the rules. You just throw it in until it tastes good, and you don't need no shit. Yeah. Um, then I got into into brewing beer, you know, with a buddy of mine. So we started brewing beer and was following recipes and temperatures and being able to recreate the same thing again and again. It was all about keeping the logs mm-hmm. way more scientific. And, the, you know, my friend was a scientist or a ma- going into a major for science. So he was all about it. Got into it a little bit. You, you measure your weights. You measure your temperature. You measure your time. And then when I moved into my restaurant after graduation, it was Junto. And it was very particular of like, here's grammed out recipes, here's sous vide cooking, time, temperature, pressure that you need to hit for it. And I realized that this baking idea makes replication so much better. So if I were to go back and try and brew beer now, I feel like it would be easier for a better result. You know what I mean? You kind of know like all this, feel more all this, yeah, yeah. Following specific amounts and temperatures mm-hmm. and grams and being very scientific about it and losing some of that creative touch that I no. thought was in there. When you realize, like, as long as you get 90% of the way there, that extra 10% is you throwing in everything and skill to recreate mm-hmm. every time. But, like, following that recipe is such a big, important part yeah. of, like, just keeping a consistent product. You know? Well, especially... Beer, yeah. food, on baking. Just about anything. Like, just yeah. one thing I mean, when you're home oh, cooking, but... Oh, yeah. Home cooking, it's all out the window. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it, yeah. Ketchup fixes all things. Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh. I'm kidding. I know you don't I believe hate, that. I know I hate you don't ketchup. believe that. I mean, like, no, you should definitely add baking soda to your ketchup, though, to make it taste better. Uh, and salt. Sea salt. Yep. Yes. Always salt and baking soda to your ketchup. <laughs> God, this is so good. It's you got know, like, it is, though. This is a fucking upset. phenomenal beer, and I feel like I'm cursing a lot on this. Am I cursing a lot? We no. also just crushed six beers. I think we've been relatively reserved. I like, think so. Yeah. Yeah. It's the internet. We're fine. Little, it's yeah. the industry. Everybody understands. We swear like I sailors. I highly and... doubt there's going to be young 
kids no. are going to be like, oh, let's watch that podcast where they 86 drink. podcast? Yeah. 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 Totally into that. Hey, Except that's hey, what hey, I would Mom, watch. have you checked kid. out this new beer podcast? <laughs> I love it. Honey, you're 12. <laughs> I got in yeah. trouble when I had AOL Instant Messenger, right? I put cigars and drinking as like an interest in my subcategory. And my mom's like, what is this? I was like, I like food and wine and, and drink and like that's all find, interconnected. Old, I was like twelve right? or thirteen, oh, and like I knew that that was going to be the path that I went down because it was all about like being interested in that stuff. Yeah. I had never smoked a cigar. I never drank anything. <laughs> that's before. okay. Not a lie. You know what I mean? Your mother. Well, this is when I'm I was like twelve. Right now. Yeah. Right. I'm gonna call her <laughs> right now. Hey, look. You listen. You gotta know this about your son. All right. Side note, the fact that your mom got this makes her the goat. Yeah, yeah. right, dude? Like, yeah. my mom's the shit. I love that lady. The I hope she understands she... what I mean by the goat. I hope yeah. she doesn't mean insulting It me. means greatest of all time, <laughs> mom. I doubt she'll listen to this. I think she, I no. think she knows how to work the internet. I also don't think that she's going to know what goat means. Mm-hmm. That's what I mean. That's yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, she's like, why are your friends calling me a goat? Yeah. No, I That's didn't really serious. appreciate it, though. Like, with everything going on for her to, like, it's show up with beers. It's a with the like, feet. <laughs> so great. I just thought it was hilarious. Like. This is a solid beer. Like, I knew just by reading the label, I would probably enjoy it. This is, like, kind of the style I, I tend to lean towards for things like this. See, I... Th- but, I like, she was just like, keep- I like the label. It's cute. And, like, bam. Like, a, it's a puppy. dope beer. Like, and it... Yeah. All right, so... And respect the fact that it's another PA. It's brewery. a PA beer. Yep. They're from, right. uh... Per- Percocy? Percocy. Percocy. Yeah. Um... Percocy? It's a, it's a Pennsylvania beer. <laughs> it's a really, like, easy... Like, Easy label, dude. There's, there's it's very nothing inviting. special like, about it. It worked on my none, mother. Like, way to go. This, Advertising again. Way to go, guys. None of this looks like it's going to be a special beer. This is a special beer. Yeah. It doesn't look really like a special beer, beer until you read it. This is a <laughs> sleeper. But that's that's the respect <laughs> of it. It's like, yeah. Yeah. they're like, we don't need to go all out for this no. label. Or this is this is a, a car with you know real nice patina on it that you look at and you go, it's trash. Yeah. And you take it on the strip and it's blowing every single car out mm-hmm. of the water. Like, it just doesn't... It doesn't I look as fancy you mentioning as mentioning my car during yeah. this whole thing. Yeah, thank Loretta. You, you know yeah. what I mean. It doesn't look as fancy. <laughs> don't, don't look at me like that. <laughs> I'll race you right now. <laughs> right now? No, not right now. No, don't drink and drive. Don't drink and drive. We're just gonna race and drive. Like they're gonna let me into jail. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, officer. <laughs> Sorry, officer. Oh, oh man. Oh, man. Uh, by the way, actually, uh, not to jump complete subjects here, but I. Uh, I do know a buddy who did that recently. He worked out. He got pulled over. <laughs> no shit. Coughed and let uh, him started coughing really heavily, and the, the officer toilet, was walking out, and he's like, so, "Sorry, sorry," and just apologized. Like, you hear like, that, guys? If you're on. at a friend's house and you're drinking beers, when you get pulled over, make sure you cough, but definitely don't drink and drive. Ever. If you're ever gonna we don't. You guys are expensive. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Oh God. All right. If you ever well, use a pandemic to your, your advantage. Yeah, if you ever need to use a global pandemic to your advantage. It only happens once a lifetime, folks. I hope so. Oh, I really hope so. How driving do you do right now? Yeah, right, exactly. I've gone like three drink points drink in the last three you months. Have, what, you have nothing else to do while you... No, that's Wait, no, no, no. We don't need to be talking about the pros of drinking and driving no, right no, now. No, I guess that's I meant... Hotels are never fun. I'm sorry. Wait, that's a darker tone than I meant to. I more or less meant, like, why... You're not going to the bar in the... Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've gone to, like, Wawa, which I only drive because I'm a piece of garbage. I absolutely could walk. Yeah, but that requires steps. Yeah. Well, I was like, well, it's windy today. Yeah. It's windy today. You don't need to throw on my Are you going to get blown over? Yeah. yeah. I'm like, All this weight I've gained during quarantine, I might blow over. Yeah. No, I'm a little little bit more grounded now. Yeah. But but no, that was my uh, vain excuse to myself. Let's drive to Wawa because that takes two minutes versus Versus walking to the See, if you're driving to Wawa, you're only exhaling in your car. So just in case you are a carrier. You're only transmitting oh, it while you're in your vehicle and not over city streets. Yeah, right? that was my justification my last few days at work. Driving? I was driving. Chef was looking at me. He goes, no bike? I was like, honestly, I am in my own little bubble. Mm-hmm. I, nobody can cough on me. I can't cough on people. <laughs> <laughs> the Rona is safe. Do you guys remember Bubble Boy, the movie? Yes. Yeah, that we movie's talk- a lot darker now. <laughs> oh, <it's, laughs> oh, that movie is so much more tangible now. Yeah. I want a bubble suit yeah. so bad. I'm like, how come my mom doesn't love me enough to put me in a bubble? What a <laughs> It's also because I'm a 30 and I should probably, you know, make my <laughs> Well, you have the screen. All you, you have all the capabilities to make you said bubble. Don't get me wrong. If I could bubble up my whole I'm backyard. I'm trying to get an astronaut costume. That, all right, Joe what? Rogan. <laughs> Is that what he wears? <laughs> when he's on with Duncan and they get blasted? Yeah. Oh, I have to check out that podcast. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Joe Rogan. Also not sponsored. Going to Spotify. <laughs> Did you just reference a podcast in a... <laughs> in a podcast, yes. It's like a... 
many it's, walls it's a metapod. Is that? How many oh, walls? Yeah. This is very metapod. Oh, dude, I'm pretty sure I just broke it's the sixth wall. <laughs> I think, I it's think the that, uh, I'm not going to lie, I think the 15% DMC. is now... Starting it's to now hit breaking walls. Right, yeah, it's breaking on walls. top of the seven percent, the seven point eight, the four percent. The... <laughs> People don't need to put math together and shit. No, 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 right? We're good. Ooh. Is that addition? All right. Well, Some our trap. pizza just arrived, and it's obviously <laughs> beers are kicking in, and we've drank all our beers, so I no longer have any more reviews for you, wonderful human beings. And George waited zero minutes. Wait, no. I'm surprised you didn't burn your mouth. But yeah, it's been like twenty minutes. That's true. Really. <laughs> All right, so we will see all of you wonderful people soon. I'm definitely going to do another post. When it happens, I'm not 100% sure how frequently I'm going to be doing these yet, considering this is the first episode, and I'm kind of lazy, so I don't know what's going to go on. Uh, I will have more beer. I will have more friends. I will have more of everything. Just, you know, bear with me. Watch. If you have any questions, feel free to hit us up. Send us some questions. Uh, if you want to see some beer on here, suggest some beers. If you th- there's an awesome place in the city that is still open that you're purchasing beers at, I would love to go there. I would love to support local. If you know any breweries that, like, I can go up and get my, you know, growler filled up or I can buy a growler or something, I'd love to hear that. Let's stay active. Let's keep talking with each other. If you are someone that, like, you know, I know or someone can, that can show me that you've been socially distancing and want to sit here and drink some beers and you've worked at a brewery or, you know, have some relevant info, like, feel free to ask. Like, you know, we'll throw you on. We'll do some shit. Like, let's go. Like, you know, it's quarantine. We ain't doing nothing right now. So let's drink beer and have some fun. All right, guys. Thank you very much. I love you all so very much.